they are making a difference on 938 Live. This whole week on They Are Making a Difference, we're taking a closer look at the humanitarian sector and those who are serving it away from their home countries. Today, I talked to Sean Ng, who is the High-End Response Programs Director at World Vision, currently based in the Philippines. I used to work for humanitarian programming in, in World Vision, China. So we, there was quite a lot of natural disasters there. So I was based in the China office. Then I went to work for the regional office for a while. Then I ended up in here in the Philippines. Probably, I would have to say this, this, this has probably been my most memorable mission just because, I mean, it's, it's not only that it's a large program, but it's, it's always nice to be on a program right from the start mm. and see it through. So that to me has always been, in, uh, it's always been quite a pleasure. And especially in, in the Typhoon High End Response, we've been quite able to do a lot of the things that we've always wanted to do that I mean, very important lessons that we've learned in the past from Haiti, from the Indian Ocean tsunami, and we've been able to put them into practice in in this response. So especially working with communities in humanitarian accountability to make sure that we set up feedback and complaint mechanisms so that beneficiaries are able to voice their concerns to us. Take us through some of the milestones then for the World Vision High End Response Office as Programs Director. My boss at the time, um, Jimmy Nadabdab, he was the first response director. He came into country on the 8th of November. I came into country about one day after him. So right from the start, you have to set up an organization from scratch because we have to set up all our programs, our operations, the finance team, logistics. So either we deploy from the rest of the organization, like Jimmy and I were originally deployments to this office, or we have to hire new. There were large, a huge amount of deployments, and then we also seconded quite a lot of staff from the Philippine office into the response. The first assessment teams went out to the field on the 8th of November when the typhoon itself struck. From then, then we set up, uh, over the next two weeks, we set up different field offices, and the first distribution went out in the first week. So it was just moving as many supplies as we could to as many people as we could get, as we, as we could reach. So the first three months were extremely chaotic, really, really long hours. But that has always been probably one of the, to me, most enjoyable parts of doing a response. Once you pass the three-month mark, you start consolidating, you start formalizing your structures, and you start cementing like your organization, and you start making your long-term hires. So who, who are we going to offer contracts to, which opens which, which positions do we want to open up? We need to start reforming the strategy so that we have a clearer plan for what we do for this year and the following years. Uh, we need to set up all our funding streams to make sure that we are financially sustainable. So then we move into a period of consolidation. So currently right now, we're in the middle of the recovery phase where we focus not so much on life-saving interventions such as, like, let's say, if we're delivering water, or emergency shelter kits or food, uh, we've moved away from that and and we're we're working a lot more on um, transitional shelter. So so more like wooden houses, we do um, water supply projects to areas where let's say the water lines were damaged or the water water sources were contaminated. We do latrines. We also do a lot of livelihoods and economic development work. So that's currently the stage that we're in right now. So a lot of people who think of high-end think that the disaster is over, but you obviously are still there. You're still helping out. How long do these missions usually last? And how do you know when your job is done? That's always quite difficult, right, to, to draw the line between when this relief work end and when this, let's say, development work, which is much longer term, begin. Especially the line continues to get blurred when we bring in, let's say, large-scale rehabilitation programs, when we do start doing large-scale construction programs. So our timeline is basically determined by what is actually needed. We would set a goal for our response, for like this organization. So, for example, our goal in, in, in this response is to, let's say, is to strengthen the resilience of typhoon-affected communities and children, whereas and some other responses, it might be to restore pre-typhoon conditions or pre-disaster conditions. I mean, drawing the line is always difficult. We just have to, sometimes we have to be very realistic about it. And we have to see what is available from our funding and what is financially sustainable for us to do and maximize that. But I can say for the typhoon high-end response, there is much, much more work to be done. Yes, a lot of the life-saving measures have ended, but still, I mean, 14.1 million people 
uh, what we call survivors. They, they survived. They were, they, they were affected by it, but they also survived the typhoon. Mm -hmm. Like out of um, more than six thousand people who died, so there were a million houses damaged. So half of which were totally destroyed. The other half were partially destroyed. And at one point, there were four million people displaced. And these are just like some of the most most obvious effects. And then. Again, then we also see like long-term economic effects of, of this as well. We see severe damage to agriculture. So there will be very, very long-lasting impact. Sean, is this just a job for you? Um, yes and no. Everyone needs a job, right? <laughs> but the thing is that um, ultimately, at least I feel this way. I mean, a lot of people in, in World Vision, they, 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 they feel that they have a calling to this and then this is what they are supposed to do. But, I mean, I always view it through a different lens. Like, yes, it is a job because, it does, I mean, if it was so fantastic, like, they wouldn't pay us money to do it, right? <laughs> like any other job, it has its own bureaucracies and there's a lot of things that perhaps are not the most fun things to do and there's a lot of frustrations that come with any job. But what I always feel is that I ultimately want to work somewhere where I am useful and I can contribute. So there are certain things that I am competent at and I would want to use these skills to be as useful as I can, um, which is why I like working in, in, in disaster relief because I know that, one, there's plenty of work to do, and two, I know that I am able to make a valid contribution. And that was Sean Ng, who is the High End Response Programs Director at World Vision based in the Philippines. This has been They Are Making a Difference. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Daphne Lim. They Are Making a Difference on 938 Live.